All right, we are going blind into Zael versus Finchinator, Tyranitar versus DOA. We know this dynamic if you've been keeping up with these uh, videos. If not, then it, it and I really do recommend um, watching these tournament games in order. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm gonna be uh, it's just to save myself the the pain of repeating myself. But basic idea: uh, whether you stay in depends on if you have Sash or Chopple with Titar, and uh, so otherwise, if you're Lum, you have to run away from superpower. And uh, if you rocks or because if you just bring the DOA down and you know basically take it down with you, uh, I mean you'll have a six five advantage. But T-Tar will be very low, and since it's so slow, that it's almost surely not going to get a chance to get up rocks later. So you might just want to get up rocks and then switch to Giratina O or something. So uh, with DOA, it also depends. Do you want to get up a spike and then superpower? Do you want to just superpower right off the bat? Most players choose spike right off the bat, especially because there's a decent chance that. Uh, Titar is going to switch out if it's not uh, if it's going to be Lum or you know even Custap is used now. So that's our dynamic. Here's the spikes. There's the crunch. So we can assume Sash or Chopple. So uh, not crunch over payback. You know minuscule difference, but there's a bulky Jirachi with zero speed EVs against. A, okay, so it's a Sash Titar very fast, and has EQ. That's something you don't see almost ever. And he goes for the body sl and all right, well, that's a smart move, preventing uh, Groudon from switching in. And now he gets to actually paraflinch the T-Tar down. Or he U-turns, okay. Body slam U-turn, maybe he uh, expected a switch to Diaga or Kyogre and wanted to keep up momentum. But either way, this is uh, something that T-Tar does really well. It, it often forces, uh, it, you know, at its best it does this exactly. It gets up rocks and does a ton of damage and forces the reveal of a lot of Pokemon. So, how could you think that's a bear? Come on, it's a, it's a snake. Obviously, it's a, it's a ghost dragon snake of antimatter. Anyway, so yeah, EQ is a very rare choice on T-Tar, but I kind of like it because uh, hitting Jirachi is good, and you keep that uh, good hit on Dialga, and you Oko Heatran, and you can never be too safe against the permanently obnoxious entity that is Heatran. You know, the low kick versus superpower thing can be kind of obnoxious, and EQ is a nice balance with some other nice benefits. So, uh, there's the EQ from Tina O, as he doesn't want to switch into it with rocks and spikes and sand. And uh, down goes T-Tar, but it accomplished a lot. And now here comes Diago with rocks already up, uh, ready to launch a Draco and uh, against a Jirachi that is already weakened. And he just dragon pulses, and down goes Tina O. And I don't know if that was worth it, because... I guess he really wants to spread more para with uh, Jirachi, but G Giratino is such a threat. All right, he did U-turns for momentum, so at least he's not wasting any time. He's uh, going back into something else that's instantly going to pose a threat. There's Mewtwo into Jirachi, so that's got to have Fire Blast. And uh, it is a lefty's Jirachi, so it does. And that's what happens when you run Flamethrower, not Fire Blast. And it gets T-waved, and down goes Mewtwo, and... The offensive threats are kaput, so I am... I think Zael is uh, fairly favored in this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't run Flamethrower Mewtwo. It, it hurts my soul for this reason you saw exactly now. And, I mean, I know you want to keep Jirachi's Dragon Resist around and everything, but Giratino... Like, imagine if you saw Giratino and still had a threat. I, I don't know. Maybe I guess if the rest of the team really crumples to Scarf uh, Diaga, then I guess it's necessary... But now the Jirachi is being used to switch into the same Jirachi. I guess uh, this is a... Oh, okay. So he doesn't have Iron Head. That's a cool set on Jirachi. Body Slam, U-Turn, Iron Head, Wish. Oh, sorry, Body Slam. Well, that's also a cool set. But Body Slam, U-Turn... Uh, that's the standard set. Body Slam, U-Turn, Stealth Rock, Wish. So at least he gets some health back. And he paralyzes the Jirachi. So this is some T-Wave Protect. I don't know if it's Wish last. Uh, so it is Wish, yeah. Alright, uh, okay, so I, I don't know what this is. I, I don't know why he's not spamming Stealth Rock or something. But he goes into Latias, and, uh... Wait, 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 wait. So, he goes into Latias and lets himself get T-waved, and here comes a Roar, and he drags in a Mewtwo, which isn't the worst thing. Like, I guess... Okay, no lefties, so uh, it's not Stally, it can't light screen, you can just fire off a Draco or a Dragon Pulse if it's Calm Mind Roar. I generally associate Roar uh, Latias more with Draco, but uh, yeah, nothing really doing here. He's, tr I guess, 
In, in, in theory, Roar is good at breaking up Wish Protect Pokemon with Hazards down because they can't instantly recover like a recover a Roost Pokemon would. So you like roar them out on the Wish, and then they have trouble getting it and whatnot. But uh, that's not what's going on here. Well, it is what went on there, but I mean, uh, Finch is you know too far behind, I think, at this point. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think he should have tried to PP stall the Jirachi rather than let his Latias get paralyzed. And, uh, and now a Kyogre comes in, so U-turn uh, and in comes a uh, lot. Nice, nice. Okay, all right. Uh, I, all, okay, all is not forgiven because I still think the Diog is probably going to win. But I have loved experimenting with Dual Lottie in this tier, and I'm really, really glad someone else brought it. Now, this, you know, whole, you know, Gen 5 OU Psy Spam thing, I, I don't know about that, the whole Mewtwo thing, because you, you have to take, uh, you have to uh, make sure you can cover the weaknesses of the Lottie Twins, not, you know, pile them on more. Uh, you know, a, a weakness to, you know, faster dragon moves, which Life Orb Mewtwo may as well have, but... Uh, I, I really dig that. I, I really uh, am glad we see it. And now something's going to... Uh, Kyogre doesn't leave. Or Kyogre doesn't stay in. So Latias gets sacked. And it actually comes in out of Thunder. And uh, Finch doesn't want to risk it. So that... I, I, I Well, I guess. But that was a real chance to make some headway. And now it is gone. Well, he body slams on the root. So he paralyzes it. So next time he won't have that problem at least. So that's nice at least. Uh, and there's a wish and a crit, so that really sucks. And now he full paralyzed. Well, they both full paralyzed. Um, so that was averted, at least. So here comes Latios of his own on the para. Is he just trying to sack it? Well, I don't know why he wouldn't wish and get back to, like, full health. He's still got plenty of PP. Well, he wins the tie through para. This is a mess and a half. I don't know if this Latios just won two speed ties or if Zael is just not max speed. But, uh, yeah, this is definitely getting sacked. Uh, at least Finch doesn't have to contend with... Uh, I like Xyle's team, by the way. I haven't mentioned that, but I, I do think it's well-constructed. Uh, so now we've got this again. U-turn... Oh, the U-turn popped off there. That might have... Well, I guess you have the same problem as you did before. Now you got to hope for a para on the protect. Or, I guess, like a crit para type deal afterwards. Oh, it's Surf? Okay, so it has a... Basically a stab in rain, so I guess that's that is. But well, I mean, there's. Well, what a what a wonderful game is this. He okay. He says he U-turned on the switch. So in comes Mewtwo, which uh, Knight. Okay. All right. So what I think was happening there was that Zael was trying to provoke um, a Jirachi switch on Ice Beam or Self Destruct. And uh, try to double into Kyogre to get that advantage. But I think it probably was safer if he just went to Dialga. Or if they just went to Dialga and Dracoed and then went to Kyogre on uh, the Wish or the U turn or whatever. And then basically, like, just wait, uh, you know, force the Dialga answer in, and then it won't be able to answer Dialga anymore, and then you win with it later on. So I think that was probably safer than this, because now. Something's gonna, you know, get KO because uh, Finch stays in, thinking, okay, I gotta, I gotta eat this, I gotta chew this ice beam, and uh, and now Kyogre goes down for nothing, and now we have that same scenario but worse. So Mute, uh, well, Mewtwo can't even double switch now. So now, actually, Jirachi can kind of win. Yeah, actually, kind of. Well, maybe it self destructs, right? Yeah, because it had to do that, and if it didn't do that. Then, it, like, if it didn't have it, then Latios would live, and, um... Yeah, I, I just think Diago was the better move there. Because it is a... It is Scarf, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely Scarf. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So... It self-destructs, and now it's up to... I mean, I still think Diago probably wins. But it depends on how much... Well, how bulky... Fin I, I assume it's pretty bulky. But it assumes how bulky, um, it depends on how bulky the Strachi is, and, and basically its ability to take uh, rainy fire blasts. Yeah, so, and if it didn't boom there, then it was just going to have to lock in a Dragon Pulse and lose. So, rainy fire blasts, or thunders, I guess. And uh, Jirachi is probably, I, I assume it's going to maybe wish? No, is, yeah, it's just going to go for thunder. Yeah, okay, this is, 
this is a, a done deal. So that was uh, that was almost well. I think it could have been done more safely, but Zael wins, and we go on to game two. Fori lead, Darkrai lead, and Fori stays in. Is it going to be Lum? It is Lum. That's so cool, and gets down the T spikes against uh, the Rai. So is this going to be a Scarf Rai lead, or is it going to be a non-Scarf Rai lead? No, he goes to Diaga. He's going to have a good matchup against most things, but not Groudon. Great move from Zael. He's really this is a very good anti, you know, offense uh, poke. DOA is like can't r fit room for a fire move most of the time, and so you're gonna get your T spike down, and then you go to your Groudon uh, for a good matchup against the ever present Seldar Diaga. So this is really smart meta gaming, if you could call it, or just you know, just smart team building and planning uh, from Zael. So rocks go up, and now he fires off a lava plume. Uh, we've talked, and he gets the burn. So this, uh, this is off to a brutal start. Uh, we've talked uh, in the last couple series about how if you, when that Stealth Rock from Diaga is so telegraphed that if you smack it with EQ uh, as it sets up, then you potentially get a big advantage. Or like another rocker like Titar. I think that was the example uh, where it first popped up. But I mean here, uh, I think Zael is also just content to get up as many hazards as possible. And especially when he's then going to you know go fishing with uh, plume birds, and here comes Crest. So we're seeing. Uh, I thought it was going to be like some sort of. Oh, I did not expect that, but that is really cool. Now I don't know how you could possibly expect Crest because it's such an unpredictable poke. We've seen a couple of them this term. I'm happy to see Crest. I mean, I love seeing Crest in this tier, but Shadow Ball is an underrated pick uh, in this. And so what I assume this means is that this is a Calm Mind 3 attack uh, Giratina. Oh, so Calm Mind, Draco, Shadow Ball, and then Aura Sphere or Shadow Sneak. And he didn't want a Draco right away. He just wanted to fire off a stab move that wouldn't put him at minus 2 special attack. And so he went with Shadow Ball, and that wound up smacking Crest. And I think that's really cool. So, uh, props. So, uh, here comes Dialga. If he Draco's here, that would be pretty... Oh, and he Calm Minds. But he's not... He's going to be... Uh, he is Calm Minds, so that's awesome. But he's just... With the burn, uh, he's a little unlucky there, and the burn puts him in range for, um, for uh, what's it called? Uh, Scarf Dialga anyway, even at plus one. But the the idea was definitely definitely cool. I like uh, that he had it. So here comes Wob, which is going to mirror coat the Scarf Rye. But uh, he's falling behind, but I'm glad to see Wob on a team like this. So now here comes Crest, which, you know, probably going to get Encored into Moonlighting. And then, uh, nope, Safeguard first. That's fine. Uh... And now it's going to come in. Well, he's going he's gonna to try to T-Wave. Not going to do anything. He, I think he probably should have gone... Uh, well, I guess he wanted the Encore to last long. Yeah, okay. He wanted the longer, uh, Encore to last longer. Because... Uh, yeah, Groudon's not going to fear that. But yeah, so here comes... Uh, well, Giratina's going to roar it out. Which is the problem. What is, I don't know about that Fire Punch. I get... Well, okay, no. If he's not Double Dance, then it doesn't really make a difference. Um... Yeah, okay, so he roars just so he doesn't risk any Will-O-Wisp stuff. Here comes the Rye, which I guess can make... If this Dark Rye actually pulls a trick off, then this could actually be quite annoying. Well, maybe. But uh, it doesn't, and uh, Pulse does nothing, and he switches that to Wob. So Finch feels like he's treading water at this point. Sorry, I shouldn't have said it like that. I should say I should have said it uh, that Zael is just in a really good position. Uh, that makes it sound like I'm faulting Finch when it's... Uh, Zal just uh, did really well to bring this team and as a good matchup. And that Spadef Dawn is on huge display as it survives uh, Life Orb, DOA, Ice Beam. I like the setup on Finch's team, but uh, Zal just has a good call with the Lum Fori. So, uh, I, I mean, I guess he would have this problem against like a Tentacruel team as well. And Safeguard uh, uh, Wob is helpful as well. But uh, then when you don't have the setup Lum Groudon, or the setup Groudon, if this was a, like a dual dance SD, you know, the SD Lum Groudon, which gets like two lives against uh, status with uh, Safeguard and the Lum, then you could overpower Giratina. But he's got, going for the full Rock Polish route, which I think you can do double dance on that team rather than the full Rock Polish Life Orb route because you have Wob for uh, offense, removing faster stuff as well, so... You don't need the full coverage thing. But, uh, yeah, here comes... Yeah, this feels like... Uh, I mean, yeah, because there's Blissey there, so... This uh, looks... This looks over, so... 
Uh, yeah. Finch and, uh, there you go. So, that was a quick series. I'm going to pad this runtime a little just so it's not completely given away. Uh, the recommendation I have for you today is a film from China called Ricky O, The Story of Ricky. Uh, Ricky is based, he's uh, sent to a prison and, uh, you, you know, he gets in trouble there and he has to fight his way out and he basically has, like, superhuman strength. And it's wild and it is crazy. Uh, I really, really, really like it. It's a lot of fun. I always like films that just go off the rails. It's really funny. I uh, I always I always appreciate uh, when that is well, whenever a movie doesn't take itself too seriously and it's just like well not just doesn't take itself too seriously but is willing to go completely bonkers, completely berserk. I really have a strong appreciation for that. So yeah, uh, while I am recommending movies, I will also recommend a. A great recent action movie from South Korea called *The Villainess*, which has some of the most stunning. I mean, if you've seen like action movies like *The Raid*, I mean, I love that. I love those for sure. But *The Villainess* is stunning, really. I, if you like action movies at all, if you like action movies in general, you should check out Asian action movies if you haven't already. Because if you like action movies and you only watch like American blockbusters, you don't know what you're missing out on. It's there's every time you see a fight scene in an American movie, and you're like, man, I really wish that would not, you know, hold itself back so much. I wish they wouldn't, you know, cut between 16 different stunt doubles every two seconds. Let me tell you, you have a lot to look forward to with the with the discovery of Asian action movies. There's so many great ones. Uh, the villain and the villainess is uh, one of my more recent favorites. So check that one out. It is uh, it is pretty crazy. And, uh, and what else? While I'm on, I'll sift for some more, uh, action goodness. I don't have any uh, instantly, uh, instant, or more like obscure off the rails uh, action recommendations popping up here based on what I've watched. I mean, I, I can just say, oh, I saw Terminator 2 in the theater this summer and it was incredible, so that one's always a good bet. <laughs> um, and... Uh, what else was it? Oh, Total Re I saw Total Recall in a theater, too. That one's not as much of an action movie, but it's just so much fun. So, I'm hoping this has been padded enough. Um, just, I'll give it another minute or two. Oh, uh, while I'm, you know, I, I, if you've seen Atomic Blonde and you, you didn't like it, I would recommend, uh, and if you haven't seen it, then definitely check it out. But I really, I didn't like that when it first came out, but then I rewatched it, and I was like, you know, this is, this is a great action movie. Uh, so, I mean, the atmosphere is just off the charts, and I wasn't really appreciating that before, but I really want to just, I mean, there's some dumb, di there's some dumb dialogue, undeniably, uh, and, you know, the plot, I don't, who cares? But the atmosphere and the action, that's what I came for. Sights and sounds, that is that is the power of cinema. And uh, that is what Atomic Blonde has in spades. The rest, I, I don't, who cares? Missing the forest for the trees. You know, just focus on what it's good at. And what it's good at is what it's great at. Uh, and, while, and I recommended two Arnold classics. Uh, so I'll recommend Commando, which is the most one-linerist movie of all time. So, uh, it's so much fun. It, you, it is a true joy to partake in if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, so I recommend you do. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, alright, I think this has been stretched sufficiently uh, for its... Yeah. Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.